Good evening and welcome to Telling Tales. Uh, here we tell atmospheric stories together through the medium of tabletop role-playing games. Uh, because you've got us on a Monday night, we'll be playing Call of Cthulhu 7th edition. Uh, this is the second arc in this anthology series, um, the first of which is called Darkwood and you can catch on uh, YouTube. All the VODs are uploaded there. It's eight episodes, about two hours each. Um, and uh, this series is called Fingask. Um, so that's that. And um, if our stream manager, John, would like to come on screen, we can see John. Hi, John. Hi, Johnny. How are you? I'm all right. It's a Good. lot cooler than last week, or at least it feels it. So I'm a happy John. It's going to be 26 degrees again on Wednesday, John. I'm sorry. You said that. You said that about the last weekend, and it wasn't. So I don't believe you. Blame the news. <laughs> it's the news's fault. The news told me to do it. Um, it's the news. Um, any uh, images that come on screen, John will be displaying for us. Uh, if we need any rules clarification, John will be providing us those in our secret chat that you don't have access to. Um, and uh, also most of the artwork, or maybe all of the artwork, I can't remember if there's anything that John hasn't done, but most, if not all of the artwork, is by John. Thanks, John. Bye. It's all, it's all good. Bye. Um, so uh, below the stream, um, you will see that there are numerous links um, so there are links to our uh, YouTube if you're watching us on Twitch or our Twitch if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, and uh, there is also a link to our Discord, which you can join for free and come and chat to us about all things tabletop role playing and otherwise. Uh, there are also links to our social media, Twitter and uh, Instagram, um, and also a link to our Patreon um, where you can sign up uh, to numerous levels of support for us, um, ranging from access to uh, bits of the Discord that you wouldn't otherwise have access to, where you can get sort of uh, backstage information and information ahead of everybody else, um, right, right the way up to a monthly one-shot run by uh, Matt, who runs the other two uh, ongoing games on this channel. Uh, he's very good at running games, so... That's worth it. Um, promo stuff. Um, so uh, Monday night, obviously, is this, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Tuesday nights, um, normally Vampire, but recently changed to uh, Blades in the Dark. This is the third week um, of Blades in the Dark, so that's on tomorrow. Um, and on a Wednesday, uh, it was normally Simba Room, but uh, started running Coriolis. Um so there's been one episode of Coriolis and the second will be this week. So uh, both of those, you've probably got time to catch up on before uh, joining in the stream live tomorrow. Um, on the first Saturday of every month, there is a, a different one shot adventure, um, different systems and GMs and uh, players. So, um, so far we've had Alien, Troika, Morkborg, Fiasco and The Expanse. Uh, the next is the 3rd of July, and I will be running it, and I am running the exact opposite of Call of Cthulhu, Honey Heist, um, where our players will be playing bears in a heist movie. Uh, so if that sounds like something you would enjoy, then uh, please join us on Saturday the 3rd of July for that. Um, and the final thing is that uh, we have a guest spot on the Free League Twitch, um, which is bi-weekly um, on uh, Sunday, so every two Sundays, and I believe this coming Sunday is an on-week. Uh, that story is called Fetters of Stone, um, so that's over on the uh, Free League Twitch, um, which there you may well find there is soon a link to in the chat if there isn't one already. And uh, without further ado, we are on to... Uh, intros and recaps of last week's session. Um, so uh, for anybody, if anybody's just joining us, um, basically up until now, 
the players were invited to Fingask Castle, the home of Sir John Stewart, uh, for some kind of opportunity which has yet to present itself. Um, and uh, increasingly strange things seem to be happening. Um, so uh, the beginning of uh, the end, sorry, of the previous session, uh, the group were just short of accused of being responsible for another member of the group going missing um, by Sir John Stewart. So I think if we can bring Sam on, who plays Albert. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, so there's Albert. Uh, so the beginning of the last session, um, mm -hmm. your group was in a position where you were basically having to defend yourselves. Do you want to yeah. talk us a little bit through that? So I'm terrible with names. I can't remember his name. The The journalist who was with us had disappeared. Can you remind me of his name? Thomas. Thomas Walker. Thomas Walker had disappeared. Uh, we were, when we were kind of investigating um, the hill fort and a Agnes, one of the staff members, had mentioned that he was seen around the hill fort as well. And she thought that that was where he was last seen and we were there too. So it was a bit weird that we didn't see him, basically. So we just should basically Sir John and everyone else that we had not seen him at any point and had no idea what they were talking about, were a bit confused as to why Agnes thought that, that was the case. Um, and I basically suggested we go back down, have a look at the hillfort and see if we can track him down because it was a bit weird that he'd be missing that long in a kind of a place otherwise unknown to him uh, and with all the other strange goings on. So um, I don't know if there's anything else. We kind of basically head back down and we had a look at the, uh, the hillfort. Um, and... Not particularly surprisingly, we didn't really find anything else um, in the hill fort. Uh, I think pretty much everyone had a kind of good wander around and a look at things, but there was nothing really to find there, uh, other than Samuel, uh, one of the other play one of the other characters played by Matthew, who decided to wander around the hill fort. While doing so, he noticed Agnes not too far away in the stream, gathering something or other, or near the stream. Um, so he went over to well, I'd say he went over to say hi. He didn't. He sneaked up on her very unsettlingly and if any of us were watching we would totally think it was utterly unnecessary very creepy um and he also failed to sneak very well and she noticed him and was very shocked and uh, then they had a brief conversation uh i don't remember the exact detail of it, but basically she didn't mean to have cast any aspersions on us i think it was kind of the, the gist of it really and uh didn't really understand how the, the mix-up could have otherwise happened um yeah yeah i think samuel felt quite sort of put at ease by their brief conversation. He didn't yeah, have the feeling yeah. that she was in... hiding anything or attempting to pass any blame. Indeed. indeed. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, I think if Inga can come on, who plays Eliza. Hi, Inga. Hiya. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess picking up from that, I mean, I think the only other thing that Agnes had said, suggested was that maybe he'd gone towards the woods, so we decided to search the woods. Um, so we decided to walk out in line so we could cover a bit more ground, um, kind of calling out to Mr. Walker. Um, after about 15 minutes kind of walking out, um, Eliza spotted, some, well, she sort of heard a shambling sound, you said, which wasn't at all suspicious and scary. Um, <laughs> and sort of a shambling, shambling sound through the undergrowth. Um, so she called out to Albert a little bit freaked out and everyone kind of came rushing over. And at that point we saw in, in like the dim light, a figure approaching us slowly, which appeared to have two heads, which is obviously not at all normal. So uh, it was sort of, a, everyone was a bit freaked out, even Sir John um looked a bit freaked out by this um so it sort of didn't seem like it was just all in our heads uh albert and eliza both failed their sanity roles at this point and we both kind of took a shot at this figure uh albert missed but eliza hit with a one on the d d100 um uh samuel uh rolled for sanity after hearing the gunshots he sort of freaked out a bit at the sound of the of the firing um but as soon as Eliza hit this figure, um, one of those heads just disappeared. Um, and then we heard Thomas Walker calling out like, don't shoot, don't shoot. Um, so <laughs> a bit of a bit of a mistake there, but uh, Albert and Sir John rushed over and found that it is uh, Thomas Walker and he'd, he'd found the missing uh, member of staff, Thomas, who'd, uh, uh, he was like supporting and kind of carrying along with him, which is, I guess why it looked like he had two heads. Um, so we obviously started to take him back to the to the main house for like medical attention. 
Um, on the way, I think Mr. Walker started telling Edmund about uh, some of the things that uh, Thomas had been like sort of saying, been sort of ranting about the stars and planets and saying like, me go there and, and stuff. And it almost it seemed a bit like childlike. Um, uh, but anyway, so we get him back to the main house. Um, so John goes to um, call for a doctor. Sorry, it's cat jumping into a box. Um, uh, so John goes to call for a doctor to come up to the house. Uh, and in the meantime, Samuel kind of offers some first aid to uh, help patch him up um, while we wait. Uh, and I think Albert starts to kind of follow after or we'll watch after Sir John a little bit uh, mm -hmm. while the rest of us are, are in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah so um, I think if Steve can come on, he plays Edmund. Um, he was uh, helping Sir John uh, move the staff member, Thomas, over to um, the staff residence. Yes. Um, yeah, so Edmund was uh, intrigued by the uh, the discussion or the the the, the fragments of speech uh, that uh, Thomas had come out with about stars and planets. So, uh, thinking back to the the cave art that Edmund had seen in the the hill fort, uh, he asks Sir John, tries to get a little bit of uh, information out of him, and isn't particularly successful, but learns that. Uh, the hill fort was built uh, within an existing structure which had been excavated possibly hundreds or thousands of years before um, and that uh, that place might have been used in strange practices that I think he, he described that uh, strange things might have gone on there that you would hope wouldn't go on today. Um, so anyway, we managed to get uh, Thomas to the staff house. Uh, we're met by Agnes at the door who is really very shocked to see uh, Thomas, uh, obviously affected quite strongly by this. Um, so we take Thomas inside and, and make him comfortable. Uh, she asks where, where he'd been and uh, uh, we, Sir John kind of explains that we don't really know where he's been, we found him in the woods. Um, uh, Sir John goes outside fairly fairly quickly, and uh, Edmund hangs back to have a quick word with Agnes. Um, it's fairly clear that uh, there's a connection, there's more of a, a, a bond between Agnes and Thomas um, uh, than there'd otherwise be between uh, um, uh, staff members. Um, and Edmund asks Agnes to keep a, keep an ear out for any, any weird things that Thomas says, and, and perhaps to jot them down. Um, and then leaves the residence. And Sir John is quite interested to know what Edmund and Agnes have been talking about. It seems quite suspicious. But then we head back to the house. Yes, um, without further incident at that point. Um, so if uh, Matt can come on, he plays Samuel. Um, so upon, hey Matt, so upon returning sure. to the, uh, the castle, um, lunch was served basically yep so uh yeah so john kind of suggested lunch which was not met with a huge amount of enthusiasm from the group given everything else that had been going on um basically uh as we went in the the, re the remaining sort of attendees were already there and again there was a sense that things are kind of dragging on a little bit of frustration from i think it was robert and a couple of the others uh Sir John very quickly excuses himself um, at the lunch and heads to the drawing room. Um, Albert uh, discusses with Robert, gives him an update about the, the shooting and about Mr. Walker and, and all the goings on. Um, Albert and Edmund also kind of briefly touched on um, the ramblings, uh, particularly about the stars that had, uh, had come from the, the rescued man, um, kind of linking through to some of the art that had been seen at the fort. Uh, there was a bit of speculation about new staff as well and who which staff might be new and who's arrived recently and yeah just a lot of a lot of kind of speculation and concern among the group um so after a while sir john still hasn't come back and um, people have sort of noticed that he's he's disappeared for a bit longer than we expected and so um the group decide to to go and have a look for him um robert kind of says oh don't worry about it give him some peace but albert in particular is quite <laughs> strong in his feeling that enough is enough it's time to time to go and find him and find out what is what is going on um so the group head through to the hallway into the drawing room and, and don't don't hear anything or see anything 
Um, but whilst in the hallway, they overhear a hushed voice saying that um, that was not our agreement. You were supposed to keep him. And then a response that sort of sounds a bit staticky, electricy. Um, I think is how it was described. And I think that's where we finished up, Johnny, unless I missed anything. That was it. Um, and uh, just at that point, a scream comes from the dining room that sounds, you would guess, like it might be the Duchess. Uh, and then a... Uh, running to the dining room as fast as possible. Nothing <laughs> happened in here. And uh, it, that was definitely a gunshot, so I'm drawing that gun. Um, I think Eliza might not run back, actually. Um, like, definitely, like, look back and see what's going on, but maybe just uh, maybe tuck back behind the door or something, but try and keep an eye on where that sound has been coming from. Maybe, again, just occasionally, like, looking behind, but I'm not sure she wants to go running into fire at this point. If that sounded like a gunshot, um, Samuel is frozen in place at this point. <laughs> Uh, I'll uh, head after Albert, and uh, <laughs> I, I have no weapon to draw, but... Uh, oh, that's fine. That's bad. It's an emotional sport. I, was, I didn't want to... <laughs> okay. Um, you run through the two doors and into the uh, dining hall, um, and you see everybody is still seated, apart from uh, Mary Brown, who is holding a small handgun uh, that is smoking slightly, you see. Um, and if you follow the sort of line of the gun, um, you see the open main front door um, and a chill coming in from outside and uh, lying just through the doorway is a dead lion. Is anyone doing anything in the room at this point? I probably just freeze. Uh, everybody's kind of looking from the door to Mary Brown, back to the door, and then um, the Duchess is kind of if you look at her, she's sort of quietly crying. Presumably, she you're behind her if you've not gone further into the room. Um, but her shoulders are sort of, <clears throat> you know, going up and down occasionally as if she's weeping a little. I will walk over to the lion with my pistol pointed straight at it. Perhaps it's best if we get people into the uh, the drawing room. Um, perhaps. Uh, yes, I, I'll, I'll try and sort of um, uh, escort or guide people away from um, the dining room. If it, if it is how, how large is the drawing room? Is it? Uh, you could fit everybody in. There might not be yeah. seats for everybody. You could sure. always bring seats through from in here. Um, Just to but yes, get everybody would out of fit. the way. Right. Yeah. Nice. Um, just in case, you know. <laughs> well, a to, to remove them from the immediate scene. Um, and, and B, in case there are any other wild cats that... <laughs> so this is a lion, you said, right, Johnny? An actual a lion. lion. An actual lion, yeah. like definitely a not lion. Scottish, you know? You don't see many lions no, in no. Scotland, as far as I'm aware. A lion, okay. yeah. Um, is it dead? It's the first thing I'm trying to... You're pretty certain. You can't see sort of the chest's not rising it... or falling. Can I see the wound? Can, see. can I see the shot? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and it looks like it would be a lethal shot. That would be me happy enough. Yes. Okay. I will. Yeah. I will keep my uh, my gun pointed directly at it, and then kind of just give it a good look over and maybe lift it up a bit to check it's a real lion because that makes no sense that that should be here. Uh, yeah. Is Edmund continuing to sort of ferry people yes. through? Yes. Um, yes. I think I'll perhaps um, sort of head towards uh, Robert and, and Mary and said, what, what, what happened? What? Can you? Um, Mary says, 
door just opened and it came in. Robert's looking at her like confused and maybe a little bit like his world doesn't make sense at that moment. <laughs> I think Robert's still made a great choice. Oh, he's still... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you had a gun. Estimation. Mrs. Brown. Was... Robert uh... says, neither did I. <laughs> um... She says, well, um, tucks it back into her sort of bag. Well, best to be prepared, uh, we, we, I guess. Are we uh, going to the drawing room? I think that's probably uh, sensible. We can, uh, uh, yes, get you comfortable in there and then uh, make sure the door's shut and we can have a look outside and uh, just check uh, check what the situation is. This is very strange. As, as, as you're, you're kind of uh, moving people, I just say, definitely dead, it looks like. Good shot. At that moment, uh, Sir John walks in the front door. Um, Presumably, we don't see him coming out from no. somewhere. No, he just uh, and says, "What? What has happened here?" We were rather hoping you could explain, Sir John. Do you keep lions? No, of, co of course not. Any zoos around here? Not as far as I'm aware. And then you start to hear this. No way. Oh, I'll just stare at Albert. You hear that? What's where's it coming from? I think maybe a sanity roll. I was gonna say that's gotta be a sanity roll. That's like oh no, 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 no. That's all the sanity. Oh dear. Oh. We can't hear that through in the other room. No, nothing for you two. No. <laughs> Good trouble close the door. 91, that's a fail. Uh, 48 out of 61. So I, 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 I'm still sane, apparently. Okay, just just one if you've just uh, one. failed. Okay. So, no, so just just for Albert, Edmund's oh, could, not losing could, any sanity. Could you explain how Edmund is fine with this <laughs> sudden... circus <laughs> <laughs> music. Um, you realise that it's getting closer, which might seem more unsettling, <laughs> maybe makes it more like a real life thing okay if if albert lost sanity can, can i get a direction from this sound uh outside outside albert yes. fires outside without looking <laughs> at what's there before anything else happened because he is really wigged out about that um probably uh, no one else can see directly out the door so they don't even know if he's shot at another lion or what but I hope uh, I uh, yeah something. so in that case uh, samuel and eliza hear another gunshot <laughs> Uh, um, I don't know whether Samuel might need to make a sanity roll for unexplained gunshots in quick succession. Um, 100%. Yeah. Unexplained lions in quick succession, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the lions yet. <laughs> uh, that is a fail. Okay. Uh, one sanity loss for Samuel then. Um, and uh, Sir, yeah, well, Sir John kind of looks at you a little because he's basically between you and outside, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, then sort of shakes his head a bit and turns and heads outside to mm -hmm. to see what the sound is. Yeah, if I wouldn't have shot anywhere near him, and if it was like really dangerous, I would retcon the shot that I didn't do it. No, but no, no. He wasn't There's the plenty of try. room, but, but yeah, yeah, still, yeah. to be stood there, he's probably like, yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit um, deafened. Yeah, yeah. So yes, he's gone outside. Uh, Albert's following Edmund. So I will have been towards the the drawing room. Yeah. Side, uh, but I will rush. Yes, to the um, the front door and. Edge past the lion. Yeah. <laughs> Just. Yeah. Uh, Mary out. and Robert continue into the um, the drawing room. Um, so Thomas Walker, uh, the Duchess, and the the Browns are both in there. Um, are Samuel and Eliza staying? Obviously, you don't know that Sir John has. So I, I, I think at the gunshot after a second, I'm perhaps. We'll look at Eliza and say, "What, what, what's going on? Can you see anything?" 
Are you all right, Mr. Thomas? I can go and have a look if you like. Oh, no. Um, no, don't, don't worry. Uh, perhaps we should stay in here. Well, actually, yes, perhaps we should. Uh, is, are the, the doors to, uh, to anything here, like open, close? What, what, what's our... Because we're in the room past the drawing room, right? Yeah, did did Edmund shut the drawing room door on the way out? That was my say? intention. That yeah. was, yeah, okay. that was, yeah. So you'd have heard the drawing room door open and then close again after some time. Um... Will we have heard any of the voices or anything? Would we would we have heard like Sir John, the other? Probably, probably not. Yeah. Um, may, you maybe would have heard voices, but you wouldn't have been able to pick out what was said or who they were. Um, uh, yeah, might might stay hunkered down then, and just still I'm still obsessively looking at that vase. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for Sir John. I'm trying. To, I'm waiting to see how he gets out of this floor or door or vase or something. <laughs> I don't know. Eliza's obsessed. <laughs> I think until Samuel hears otherwise, even though it's a choice between the creepy electronic noise and the gunshot, he'll choose the creepy electronic noise and stay <laughs> in the hallway until he hears something else. Okay. So, uh, Sir John is outside first, Albert close behind, and uh, Edmund a few seconds afterwards after edging past the lion. Um, so... As you're kind of working your way outside, the noise of da, 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 is getting louder. Um, and you see coming up the path towards the castle from the direction of the village is a circus procession uh, with a menagerie, uh, a military band, maybe about 50 horses and uh, a number of sort of um, uh, cages or cases on uh, carts being pulled along by horses in which there are what you can spot at least some of seem to be sort of human curiosities. Uh, and at the head of all of this is a man who you might presume to be a circus ringmaster um, riding on the horse, a horse stood up and sort of waving his cane around to the tune of the music, um, the top hat. <laughs> so John, has, has, have you arranged this? What? I've, I've no idea what is going on. Well, that Albert makes two of us. Stares open mouths for about 10 seconds at the circus and then is going to rush back inside and straight up to his room. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, does it take him past us? Yeah, I'm going to storm past. I'm not even going to Yeah, like, so about, if... in about 30 seconds, he's going to come past you. So is Edmund staying with Sir John? Um, I think... I think I'm going to head back in briefly um, and head to Samuel and Eliza and say, he's outside. So John's outside. I, Wait, I what? Don't, How do you mean? There was, oh, yeah, okay. There's a lion. It's dead. But Sir John walked in from the outside, just down. What was the gunshot? That was... That was Mrs. Brown shooting the lion. Oh, the first one was Mrs. Brown shooting the lion. The second one was was Mr. Moore. Uh, he's he's quite stressed, I think. But Sir John hasn't left. We heard him just a moment ago here, and he's not. He's uh, he's right now. He's outside. I don't know which is more bizarre. That or a lion? A lion? Are you no, sure it's a lion? I have to see this. I mean. You, You're welcome to. Just quickly, do you think Edmund or and or Albert would have left the set of doors open on the way through the drawing Albert, room? Albert definitely. If you were rushing through, do you think Albert rushed straight past without saying a word up to the room and is probably coming back downstairs now? Um, I think I still would have closed okay. the the yeah the outer drawing room door. Okay. Yeah, El Eliza will head off and to see what the hell is going on here. I'll, I'll follow. 
shortly behind that, I'll come down the stairs with my shotgun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, Albert, is there still... Are we still in danger? Why do you need that? I don't know what the hell is going on here. And then Albert continues. Oh, I, I haven't mentioned the circus. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, what? There's a, there's a circus. I yeah. mean... I mean as, as he says circus, you hear Albert cock the shotgun. <laughs> are, you, are you saying this while on the move? Yeah. Okay, so then as you open the drawing room door into the dining hall, you hear... <laughs> and you now hear the, the sound of a number of sets of drums along to the music as well. What in God's name is oh. happening? It sounds like an army out there. And you see a deceased lion on the floor near the door. And I think you should both make a sanity roll. Yeah, not, not, not sure I'd have ever seen a lion before. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a fail. Just uh, one if you fail. Okay. 32, so I do pass this one. Um, Heading outside. If, if, if like, and if anyone else is not walking quickly, Al will probably overtake them with his shotgun, <laughs> basically held aloft out the door. I think yeah, maybe a little bit stunned at the sight of this lion. But if mm -hmm. Albert's then brushing past, they'll wake up a little bit and yeah, follow, follow, follow right close, close to Albert if possible. Presumably, no one's stopping me. <laughs> no. Okay, that's all good. I uh, yeah I. <laughs> Not horrified, but just kind of bemused now. Um, I suppose we'll follow the group. By, by the way, we, I walked right through the drawing room with my shotgun drawn and cocking and loaded. Did any of the NPCs say anything? They all looked at you, but also the last thing that had happened was a lion was shot in front of them. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's, the door it's reasonable that like you've already killed one big cat on the grounds. Another one has just been shot, which makes even less sense than the first one. So I think you you could probably presume that they're quite happy shutting the drawing room while other people scope around for other big cats. I'm glad they can have a sane explanation for the insanity that is happening. <laughs> um, okay. Really didn't think that Eliza would be in a position to feel like it again, but she'd probably draw her gun as well. <laughs> uh so you get past the lion and outside and the music is near to deafening at this point. Um, and the uh, procession pulls up and um, you see what uh, the other two had seen previously. Um, so at the front of this uh, procession is the ringmaster type <coughs> fellow in a top hat sort of waving his uh, cane around to the tune of the music um, with a a sort of a small grin on his face as he pulls up. Um, and then with a da -da 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 da 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 it all stops. The procession stops, the music stops, and he's about five feet away from Sir John, who is stood in the middle of the path, sort of staring the procession down. How does the John look? Yeah, what's the John look like? Tense. <laughs> That's fair. Um, the ringmaster fellow, uh, in one uh, very gracious motion, jumps down from the horse. Um, make a spot hidden roll. My gun jerks at him when he jumps off the horse, but then I lower it again immediately. Uh, that's a 20 for me, uh, which is definitely under the 65. Yep. Oh, it's a tick as well if you've not already got one. It's yeah. already ticked, yeah. My first tick, I got a tick. <laughs> nice. I got a pass as well. I fail by three. But... Okay, Samuel, Eliza and Albert, you're pretty certain that he took about a quarter of a second longer than he should have done to touch the floor. Like, how certain 
as in this doesn't make any sense according to how we understand movement should function. Yeah, it was just the the smallest of like if you know, it's as if he Yeah. Johnny, just, I've already said I was twitching my gun at him and now you're giving me this. Just the tiniest amount longer than you would have expected him to take to hit the floor. Maybe yeah. it was just a stress thing and you're not really registering it all properly, but just the This is a weird question, but is it like <laughs> Is it like as he gets to the ground, he sort of decelerates too slowly, or is he just falling consistently kind of too slowly? You don't notice any change in velocity. You just, It's just when he hits the floor, you go, I've, you, you know, I thought he should have done that a okay. fraction He's... of a second earlier. It's just like un slightly out of place. Yeah, very, very much so uncanny the physics, valley. The physics engine is playing up. Yeah. And it this is obviously a little bit weird. I mean, Eliza might take a step back, but you know, very resolutely. Explain yourself. What is this, Sir John? What What is this? I've I've no, I, I've and the the ringmaster steps forward and kind of bows with a flourish, and says, "Sir John Stewart. My name is Bertram Mills." And this is my circus. Sir so John says, what is it doing on my land? And he says, well, I thought, I thought perhaps you might have the great Bertram Mills and his circus stay on your land. I'm sure it would be beneficial for everyone involved. Beneficial? There's been wild cats roaming about and attacking people. This is dangerous. This is not beneficial at all. Hmm. Hmm. I'm at, I am concerned that there may have been some confusion that may have led to... Uh, the death of one of my favorite performers. I had, uh, I had sent that poor beast ahead to uh, get your attention. Nobody note that uh, she walked in on her hind legs. Certainly got our attention. A simple trick. Well, I think for that especially, we should definitely be permitted to stay. I'm sorry, but I was attacked by another wild cat. Like I'm this sorry, earlier. miss. I have no idea who you are. I am speaking to Sir John. Sir John. I would very much like for you to permit us to stay on your land this evening. Sir John is looking incredibly tense and he says, no, I don't think that that will happen, and I would appreciate if you would treat my guests with a little more kindness, Mr. Mills. I have no need for a circus on my land. And he says, Well, Mr. George Smith, a friend of yours, I believe, Sir John, said that you would be more than happy to put us up, and uh, I may have to tell him that your hospitality is not all it's cracked up to be, especially after my uh, star performer was shot dead over your lunch. No, I think the grounds will be a wonderful place for our performance this evening to take place. I'll have my men inform the villagers. And Sir John visibly shakes for a second and then turns, walks past you all back into the house. I think Albert says through gritted teeth, I think you should leave. Uh, he's basically walking his horse off towards uh, the lower area um, down the, the path 
I shoot the horse. <laughs> okay. I hope I don't shoot him, but I'm not too bothered if I shoot him at this point. <laughs> uh, it's not far away, is it? Um, 15 feet, something like that. Uh, I fail. <laughs> okay. <Rolled> very high. <clears throat> um, he and everyone else involved with the circus continue. They don't seem to flinch or particularly turn around, pay pay you any attention. I'm I'm looking around for any bloody hairs. Um, uh, is that no? Right. At the gunfire, Samuel is going to make haste <laughs> into the house. Um, Albert's going to check he has a number of shells left and then sprint full speed over to the staff quarters. <laughs> okay. Like, keeping an eye on where the circus is going the whole time. Uh, I think Eliza, maybe a little bit, like, frozen for a second and then I think we'll chase after Albert. I'll follow him to the see see how he's getting on. I think so, I'll go after uh, Sir John. Okay. So the um, from the path that leads up to the castle, there are two paths down to the lower area. Uh, one of which is the one that you've mostly been taking, which leads you to basically the front of the residence and where the lock is. And uh, the other of which leads you down to just behind the Iron Age fort. And there is a large grassy area there. They are heading down that way. Obviously, they've scoped out and there's a lot of land there for them to set up on. Um, so you can get to the residence relatively easily without sort of going near them. Um, so Steve's going after Sir John. Uh, sorry, uh, Inga and Matthew, where did you say you guys were going? So, uh, sorry, oh. sorry, Eliza, Inga. <laughs> so I was just, just going to follow Albert. Okay. I think Samuel would have run inside. I, would he have seen Sir John? Um, if he'd headed, headed, headed straight to the house, probably not, right? Uh, Sir John turned and went inside. Yeah. Yeah. So I might have caught up with him. Uh, yeah. yeah, if you if you left relatively quickly, um, you probably got to him by the middle of the dining hall. Okay, so... Same with yes. Edmund, if, if you were doing the same with Edmund, Steve. Do you think we arrive at a similar time, Edmund and Samuel? Uh, maybe five seconds between, I would say, if, you, if you've sort of bolted off. Okay, so Samuel is, is going to basically run up to Sir John and sort of step in front of him, whichever way he's going. Yeah. And say... So, there is absolutely no way that you can allow them to stay here. I don't know if you need to call someone from the village. I don't know what you need to do, but you must get them off this land and immediately. Edmund will have shown up by this point as well. Mr. Thomas, I'm... I mean, they were rude, but... Um... I'm not sure if there's any need to be concerned other than that. They did walk a lion into your home where you were hosting some um, That's true. people from around the country. Who is, who is, who is George Smith to you, Sir John? Why, why, does, why does his name carry so much weight? Oh, he changed, well, he were... yes, he's, uh, he's my, my colleague to do with the... Uh, the, the 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 great discovery and opportunity that I've uh, called everybody here to discuss. So, you know, I'd be uh, I'd be best placed to keep him on side. I think. It seems a very sudden turnabout. You were adamant that that circus should leave. Yes. Well, um, 
Mr. Smith should be uh, should be here later today. That's uh, that's who I'm expecting to arrive. So I'm hopeful that uh, he can clear all of this up and I can avoid any uh, unnecessary nastiness. Nastiness? Well, you know, if I were to try and chase these people off my land, there are a number of them and a number of wild animals. I'm sure it could turn badly for me and... Uh, if that were the way it were to go, and hopefully, uh, if if this man, uh, this Mills chap, knows um, Mr. Smith, then hopefully they can sort it out between themselves. Well, your guests have already opened fire on this group, and they don't seem concerned. To me, that does seem strange. Yes, as I say, I'm attempting to avoid any unnecessary nastiness, Mr. Thomas. I'm. Uh, I would take it as a positive that uh, things are currently at a, a neutral stance. I I would just ask that whatever your offer is, whatever your proposition is, perhaps you would prefer to tell me in private if you're holding it back from the rest of the group for a good reason, but I would be planning to leave if this group does not remove themselves from the ground very soon. So if you would like to tell me... Yes, of course, I understand. Um, Mr. Smith will be here shortly, I'm sure, and um, then we can have all of this mess figured out and we can discuss the amazing discovery that uh, that, we've, um, that we we want to share with, uh, with those of you here. I think someone will kind of look at Albert at this point. Uh, sorry, Edmund, at this point, as if to say... It, it, is this flying with you? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what to say. This is... <sighs> no, I'm speechless. Okay. Can uh, I offer you a whiskey? We'll go to the drawing room and we'll all have a nice glass of whiskey and calm our nerves a little. He is his similar to the other night. His hands are sort of as he's sort of rubbing his hands together and then takes them apart. You see that they're sort of shaking. I think I might uh, I might take a take a walk outside if you don't mind. Uh, I could do with some fresh air. Yes, of course. The yes. I may join you, Edmund, if if that's okay. Mm, certainly, yes. Albert and Eliza. So you're heading straight for the Sir Stuart's house? Yep. Albert was flat out running there. Eliza might catch him because Albert's quite old and chunky. But... <laughs> Mr. Moore! Albert! Wait! Uh... He doesn't really slow down much. <laughs> I'll probably catch up to him. <laughs> yeah, that's not that difficult, I don't think. Um, I, he, no, and also, Albert does not say anything. He kind of glances quickly at you. Maybe just a little nod and mm -hmm. carry on. Uh, you see, you see, Albert is while running, feverishly trying to reload the shotgun, <laughs> uh, and then bang on the staff door once there. Uh, do I see any other staff while I'm on the way down? Uh, no, there's nobody out and about currently. Okay, I'll bang. Um, on the it's staff. just been lunch, so anybody who was sort of kitchen staff will be sorting that stuff out. Um, I'll bang on the staff door and uh, full bellow yell. Madhouse! It's a gosh darn madhouse! Uh, to the to the building in general. Uh, you hear some uh, clattering around inside, and then the door opens, and it's Willie. Mr. Moore, sir, what? <laughs> Level What's up, going up, crazy. on? Now I'm now I'm full on like wild eyed, insane looking, shotgun in hand, and he's probably a, like well, uh, like known enough about hunting that he could see it's been fired recently. <laughs> um. What? What's what's going on, Mr. Moore? Nothing is making any sense. We are not spending another moment in this place. I... <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yes, of course. What's has uh... a lion? So John just... organized a, a, a circus. No, he organized nothing. He has no idea who they are. They just showed up. A lion walked into the building. We had to kill the damn thing to save our lives. <laughs> nothing what's is making that? any sense. Get all the guns. Get everything. With I, get the carriage. I, I don't know. Well, yes, okay. Um, 
he goes off. I'll kind all of, of the guns. If I can see any of the other staff members, I'll kind of look at them and be like, you should... This place is... And then just kind of not really know what to say. <laughs> he uh, returns with um, a number of guns. <laughs> I think I said I had three shotguns in total. You did, yeah. <laughs> so I'm carrying one, so he has the other two. Uh, I'll say... I'll just make sure he's holding one. Like, you know, this is your yeah. shotgun. You should use this shotgun if you need to. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, sir. He's looking I'll, sort of more and more afraid as this conversation goes on. I'll kind of turn back, turn to Eliza and motion a shotgun to her if she wants it. <laughs> uh, I don't think she'd really have much idea what to do with it. So, uh... and, and then I think in a moment of like panicked, sort of un, suddenly not realizing what he should do, Albert goes, should we leave? Uh, what do we do? I, I think it's been a very eventful day and there have been two wild beasts, not even animals. Um, mysterious, I, I don't even, I don't know how to begin to explain it. And a very large part of me thinks we need to get the hell out of here, but what is it, Mr. Moore? What is all of this? I I need to understand it. What what is it? What is going on here? I, this circus is just some other bizarre intrusion. I don't know, but the, we don't even know. We haven't even had this ridiculous presentation yet from Sir John. This everything is being delayed and delayed, and just more and more bizarre things are happening. I, I need to know what's happening. And Sir John, yeah, he just appeared out of nowhere. I was watching where he went. I have to understand it, Mr. Moore. I think Albert does a little look between Eliza and uh, Willie, just like, see, Willie, it's not just me. Like that sort of look. <laughs> um, yeah, yes. Um, and then I'll just kind of say, right, let's go back up to the main building then. Uh, we shouldn't leave Mr. Carter and Mr. Thomas and nothing else. Find out what's going on up there. Will he come with us? But don't, I don't want you out of my sight. This place is... Okay, sir. Yes, of course. I feel like I may not be able to leave before that rude ringmaster man gets a good talking to either. Disgusting attitude. <laughs> Start um, walking yeah. back up. A brisk walk back to the main building. I will make sure to, to enter the building via the lion so that Willie can see I'm not crazy. Because... <laughs> It's still, fit, despite long, having lost significant amounts of sanity, Albert is still conscious of appearing very crazy in front of this person he actually cares about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as you enter, everybody else has already gone through to the drawing room by this point. Um, and uh, Willie, upon sort of walking up the steps and coming to eye level with this dead lion on the floor, um, you hear a sharp intake of breath and he stops walking. Good I'm God! I've not seen anything like you. it before either. It's it's horrifying. A madhouse, Mister Mora. I, I hope this isn't um, out of line, but um, am I right that Sir John's known for his whiskey, sir? Uh, yes. Do you think, uh, even though these are working hours, sir, perhaps I? Maybe you'll be able to indulge in a small glass. Uh, uh, follow me. I'm sure he has the best stuff out now. If he doesn't, we'll find it. Are they all in the drawing room at the moment, the we? Uh, yes, I believe. Are Samuel and Edmund staying in there as well with Sir John and the rest of the group? Or were you planning on doing anything else? Um, <clears throat> so I was, I was planning on heading outside to... Oh, yes. Sorry, um, you were going outside. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, yes, we sir. might actually cross paths because I was going to try and talk to Agnes, and presumably she's at. Would it would it have been the same? Yeah, you might come back. Past mm. us. Yeah, you're probably leaving the um, the dining at hall at the same time as they're coming in. So yes, so, you cross paths just past the lion. 
I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> nod at the group. <laughs> uh, uh, how how are you doing? You you seem uh, you seem pretty pretty shaken, Mister Moore. Well armed. Um, Albert doesn't yeah, really reply to that. <laughs> Um, um, I think if you're obviously you're obviously leaving, right? Yes. I'll, uh, yeah. I'm. I'm just. I'm going to. I think I might try to have a word with Agnes. Um, okay. if you we'll can... be with the kitchen staff. I don't know actually. Um, you would imagine, based on the fact that Sir John dropped off an injured person with her, she may well have yeah. basically been granted leave to care for this person rather than her kitchen duties, probably. So yes, I'll I'll be heading back there. Um, if if Edmund is obviously leaving by himself, I'll say, Mister Carter, are you armed? Uh, no. I will. So I think Samuel was planning to join Edmund, but upon seeing the group come in, he's now a bit torn. He wants the safety of the group, but he also doesn't want to be near the firearms. So I think he'll well, kind I, of hesitate no for a moment, but then. Yeah, well, I think well, I'll hesitate for a moment, but then kind of make as if he's going to join Edmund outside. I, I am holding my pistol out to you <laughs> right, right at this moment, Edmund, given you said you had no firearm. Um, <sighs> while, while I'm doing it, I'm saying this place is insanity. Whatever happens, we don't know what could happen next. Take the damned gun. I, I, fear, I fear I wouldn't be uh, much use with it. Um, we won't be long. Uh, don't worry. I will. If you say you fear you won't be much used to it, I'll holster my pistol and gesture to my knife, which is also on the belt. Uh, okay, I'll 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 take the knife just to just to kind of placate you and mm. uh, <laughs> glance at Samuel, I guess. And um, yes, I I want to talk to to Agnes again. I, this George Smith. That name seemed to drop an awful lot of weight. Um, she might know more. Yes, she, she was actually quite forthcoming last time I spoke to her, so I, I think that's a good idea. Also, while you're leaving, I will say, everyone in here could be in danger. Make sure they know that. Sure. Okay. So, Albert, Eliza, and Willie head into the drawing room. Uh, everybody, everybody turns as the door opens. Um, everybody that you expect to be there is there. So, Thomas Walker, the Browns, uh, Sir John, and the Duchess are all there, each sort of nursing a, a tumbler. Albert has shotgun out, pointed towards the floor, clearly loaded, <laughs> as he walks in the room. Uh, I don't know what Willie, how Willie is holding his shotgun. I don't know if Eliza has her gun out. Uh, when you say loaded, is it also sort of cocked in place, uh, or is it open? Yeah, I think Albert's confident enough of his shooting skill that he would be happy to lift it, and he's not quite at the point of thinking he's going to have to kill someone upon entering this room immediately. Okay. So he's got it cocked over his arm yet. Okay. Um, I will not say anything and make a beeline straight to a, a bottle of. Sir John's finest <laughs> whiskey. Uh, yeah, um, Willie follows you. I'll hand it to Willie. That was my intention because I felt like yeah. Willie might not be willing to grab it. You know? yeah. um, he sort of <laughs> couple of ice cubes. <laughs> oh, he gets some ice cubes. Oh, he does. Yeah. Albert takes the bottle back and just drinks some from the bottle. What's Eliza doing? Uh, she'll grab a glass and. Wait until Albert's finished swigging. Uh, if, if you had a glass, if you had a glass before Albert swigged, he would pour for you first. <laughs> no, I, I think he probably got got there first. <laughs> I like that idea. Okay, Albert blushes slightly, uh, wipes the bottle bit on his sleeve, and then pours you some. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Edmund and Samuel. So you're going to the residence. Yes. Cool. Um, the sound of the circus music still fills the air, as well as um, sort of the shouting and clanking and dropping of organisation from that area that you can see is being set up. Um, you see the the beginnings of the the tent, 
the big top starting to be set up over there. Um, uh, but you're taking, obviously, the other path towards the house. Um, so you get there. Um, door's closed. Okay, I'll well, uh, knock at the door. Um, after about 10 seconds, you hear it. Uh, just, just a moment. Um, and then the closing of a door, and then the front door opens, uh, and it's Agnes. And she says, oh, hello. Uh, hello, Agnes. Uh, sorry to uh, to trouble you. May I, may I come in? Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course, please. Thank you. And I'll sort of, you know, uh, enter, make sure the, the front door's closed. Uh, how's, how's Thomas doing? Um, it's not been long, I guess. But, uh... Much the same, I'm afraid. He's... Uh sort of uh, fitful sleep um, more mutterings but much of the same mm, okay um, yes I don't know whether you've heard the commotion outside there's uh... yes I had to close the window unfortunately I was uh, getting Thomas some fresh air but uh, it was waking him and making him quite agitated mm, agitated Yes, I presume it's the, the fever and the just the noises, I'm not sure, but uh yes, he was becoming quite um well unhappy. Yes, that's that's uh, understandable. Um I, I wonder whether I can I can uh I need I need some information. Um and I was wondering whether you could uh, uh help me out, uh, whether you know anything. Um you don't happen to know uh, who this this uh, George Smith? Um, I've 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 heard mention of him around uh, around the staff. Um, so Sir John um, has worked quite closely with a a, a man a, a John Rowlett over the years, and um, well, between you and I, I think he'd. Uh, got himself in a little bit of debt with uh, with Mr. Owlet, but um, they still seem to be friends, and then I think at some engagement um, Mr. Owlet in introduced um, uh, uh, Sir John to, to, to George Smith. Um, I'm afraid that I don't, I don't really know anything about him. I don't believe he's been to the castle. Um, so uh, I, I don't think anybody on the staff has met him, and I, I, I couldn't tell you what his vocation is or um, any other mm. information like that. I'm afraid. Yes, apparently this this George Smith uh, is uh, known to our colleagues with the uh, uh, the ringmaster, which is why we have a, a circus, uh, an impromptu yeah. circus on our doorstep. So. Sir John organised this for a discount, or...? No, Sir John knew nothing about it at all. I, I sense very much that uh, this Mr Smith is, uh, is uh, applying uh, pressure to, uh, to Sir John. Um, Sir John seemed very reluctant to uh, accept the circus's presence up until the point that uh, Mr Smith's name was dropped and then uh, totally changed his behaviour. Um, oh dear! You mentioned layoffs. You mentioned staff um, have have left recently. I was wondering whether Sir John was was having a little financial difficulty. Yes, it's. It feels very crude to discuss. I'm afraid, but I, mm. I do believe that there there may be. That may have been the reason that some of the the staff were um, were let go. I believe. And just this might seem a, a curious question. Did you see the, the, the people who were who were let go? Um, have you seen them since? Did you did you see them leave? Oh yes. Um in fact um uh, you've met one of them. Um you see Sir John um when he can give work to the to the previous staff he does. So um uh, Ian Tanner was uh was the man who announced you on your arrival here at the castle. Um, he was a, a full-time member of staff previously and um, 
because it was an event. Uh, so John obviously saw fit to to have him um, work the evening. Um, so yes, uh, a lot of them live in the village. Hmm. That's uh, that's good to know. Um, yes, I I must I must confess I am these. There have been many strange events over the last day or so. I do. Uh, I'm beginning to worry for uh, uh, for people's safety. Obviously, Thomas is. Uh, I don't know what uh, what happened to what happened to him, but uh, if you have an opportunity, Agnes, it might be wise to. Uh, take some leave and maybe um, take yourself and Thomas and maybe care care for him in the village if that's a possibility. Um, I'm sure it'll be quieter and uh, rather more uh, amenable to recovery than, than being sat next to a circus. Yes, I'm quite sure. Um, thank you. No, thank you for your Perhaps, help. Uh, Perhaps if, if Willie comes back to the, the house later, um, I might be able to ask him to to take us down in the carriage. Certainly, I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll pass on your request. I'm sure that won't be a problem at all. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything else I can do for you? I'm sorry if I didn't have the information you need. Oh no, that's that's uh, you've been very helpful. Uh, so thank you. Um, Good. Take care. Thank you. And um, uh, yes, I'll head back, I guess. I don't know, was, was Samuel, did Samuel end up? So I think Samuel, given the last interaction with Agnes, has perhaps just sort of hung back a little bit and is, is kind of looking around the grounds, kind of stood outside. Um, yeah. Okay. Just surveying. Hopefully he didn't see anything. <laughs> Hopefully he's still there. He is, and he didn't. <laughs> Right. Well, I guess I'll uh, yes begin heading back to the uh, the house, looking around. Um, Did you learn anything useful? Um, bits and pieces. Uh, it seems yes. It seems Sir John has uh, found himself uh, with some uh, money problems, so uh, his will might not be entirely his own at the moment. I do wonder whether. Um, this whole venture is being driven by uh, um, by this George Smith fellow. This is, yeah. I, oh, awfully strange way to call in your debt. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, it's about the man as well. This, oh, I can't put my finger on it. Oh, God, there's just so much, so much going on. I um, yeah, don't feel myself at all. I don't blame you. And I suppose you get many letters about this sort of thing. Absolutely not. Albert and Eliza, are you doing anything specific other than sitting and having a drink oh, and yeah. discussing the dead lion? So um, uh, every time you say Albert and Eliza, Albert's just like, I'm just dreading the next moment with him now because all the sanity loss and I don't know how he's not taking this well. Um, Albert has a few swigs from the bottle, and then he probably does say to um, Eliza and Willie, but only briefly, he just says, um, I'm going to go take a look, and then heads out the nearest door towards where he thinks the circus went. I haven't let go of my shotgun this whole time. I've been drinking with like my other hand. Okay. Oh, I'm so torn. Well, um, I'm assuming Willie will follow me. So if Willie is absolutely yeah, Willie's yeah, following you like a lost little puppy, really. No, oh, no, poor Willie. Oh no, why am I doing this to Willie? <laughs> um. So John is still in the ro drawing room with everybody. Yes. At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I in that case, I will. I think may maybe just before spotting Albert leave might uh, just briefly sort of congratulate Mary on her excellent shot um, and then follow after Albert again. If it, do, Does that mean I have a moment with just me and Willie or do you think you're close enough that that doesn't happen? Uh, no, I, yeah, I, I, I'd take a, take a minute 
to... Yeah, you probably got 30 it. seconds, I would okay, say, okay. for that. I think I will look at Willie with a serious face once we're out of earshot from everyone else and just be like, Willie, if anything goes wrong, just get yourself out of here, okay? Make sure you're safe. I don't know. Hopefully, it'll all be fine, but I don't know what's going on here. You make what do you mean, Take care sir? of yourself. If, if I should disappear or something should happen to me, you disappear. get out of here. What okay. do you mean, disappear, sir? Look, you've seen the mad things that have been happening here. I don't know what could happen. I'm glad to have you at my side right now. It's comfort. But... I want to make sure you're safe. He, um, he sort of checks his pockets where he's got shells. So you're talking to him. <laughs> you saw the lion. You've heard that circus. Nothing makes sense here. Just get yourself away if you can. You don't think there's any way of helping me. Promise me. Okay, sir. Take that, that young lass, Eliza, with you if you can as well. She's, she's a good sword. Probably about oh, one so time if, it, if it comes if it comes down to it, I would help anybody I could, sir. Of course, of course. Um I think like Eliza probably catches up with that moment too. <laughs> All right, you're going to confront this ringmaster then. Don't know what I'm going to do. See what's going on at the very least. Right. You probably cross paths again. Um mm -hmm. On the uh, path just outside the door, the sun is beginning to go down now. Um, it's December, and you're looking at sort of three thirty. So, um, yeah, beginning to dip. Are there like torches and lights around the circus? Where um, are they doing it in the dark? <laughs> well, the, it, it's not. It's not dark yet. It, you can still see um, the so, some of the. <clears throat> lanterns are lit. You can see somebody kind of walking around it. Excuse me. You can see somebody walking around and checking them all. Um, so, yeah. Th then you can't see from here whether they're going to have sort of additional lighting up around the circus. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, they're not putting it up in the dark with the music still going okay. or anything. Is, is the music weird. still going? Are they apparently still playing music while setting up? Um, not at the moment. Okay. That's marginally more relaxing. <laughs> uh, do Also, do I recognize the person who's checking the lamps? Does that just look like one of a member of staff? That we've... Uh, yeah, you've seen them, um, but it's not somebody that you've spoken to. I think if I'm walking past them, I will just say, we should leave this place. <laughs> With a they kind of ju ju jump a little as they've been concentrating on their work um, and turn to see somebody they don't really know with a loaded shotgun. <laughs> Maybe it'll help the argument. And they kind of uh, scar scarper along to the next one that's sort of a, you know, 20 feet away. Um, this was sort, sort of towards the the fort, right? That they were heading. Yes. Um, we'll be giving that fort a bit of a sideways glance every now and then as well. Just yeah. So you got you guys cross each other um, on the path um, before you drop down. I will nod at you two. <laughs> <sighs> we're, off to, we're off to the circus. I will, gl I will glare at you angrily at just the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just been to uh, uh, to to see Agnes, um, and I look around. Uh, Sir John isn't anywhere near. Visibly near? Uh, no. Right. No. Um, you, you might have guessed this already, but uh, yes, it sounds like uh, it sounds like Sir John has has money problems, and this uh, this George Smith fellow um, sounds like he can exert a fair amount of pressure. Um, this so explains the layoffs, I guess. That explains why he wanted to let this slide. Yes, yes. I don't know what this Mister Smith has on Sir John, but uh, it seems to be pretty uh, pretty potent. I why there's a circus here, though. Why would he want a circus? 
I have no idea. Um, <laughs> no idea. I did, uh, Mr. Moore, I did um, take the liberty of uh, um, promising your, your carriage to uh, Agnes and Thomas, and I suggested I, I don't think it's right that they should stay here. So uh, uh, if uh, your, uh, your man is able to uh, ferry them to the village, get them out of harm's way, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they would uh, very much appreciate that. I will just glance over at Willie next to me, but not tell him to go do that right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no, actually, I will probably ask uh, uh, Mr. Carter, do you think they, how is he? Should they go now? Um, there's been no, there's been no immediate change. I, that, I'd forgotten that thing, that thing we heard, the voice before, before the lion. Um, just, what, what did he say? What, that was, that was Sir John's voice we heard, right? In the hall. One Something of the about not being our agreement, about keep keeping him or not letting him go or something. Do you think that refers to Thomas? Absolutely. No doubt about it. Sir John's right. keeping this from us. I don't know what else it could be. It's the only why logical you, explanation. Why do you think I keep telling his staff to leave? He's using them somehow. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I think I think Thomas and Agnes should get out of here. I think that would be best. I absolutely agree. In fact, I could fit the whole staff of this house in that carriage, I would. <laughs> He's so, been here for one evening, and we've heard all of these strange goings on. Surely the staff have heard something. I know they're normally staying at the other house, but the staff are everywhere. The uh, staff yeah. are the people who know what's really going on. I will it's glance, really like, knowingly at Willie again, saying, you know, I asked you this twice before, Willie. <laughs> I, I haven't heard anything, sir. I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, if it's all the same, I'd rather keep Willie here with me for now. Perhaps he can do that journey soon if you think that would be okay, Mr. Carter. Yes, I think we should be uh, we should be ready to uh, uh, to get them out of here um, quickly if we're able to. But uh, yes, if uh, certainly if you're intending to visit the circus. Um, the more the merrier, I guess. He what are you intending about, to? He said something about bringing the villagers up to, to the circus oh. this evening. Perhaps, perhaps they won't even be allowed to, to, to stay in the village. It all seems very strange. I'm sure it's only those in, invited. I don't even know, though, I suppose. I really don't know. I mean, uh, yes, Mr. Moore, what, what? <laughs> I say we're going off to the circus. I'm, I'm really following Mr. Moore here. Uh, what are you hoping to achieve? I don't know. Can I can I make a suggestion? Um, given that you've used that already once, Mister Moore, perhaps I could I could head down first, um, get a sense for. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that this escalates any further. Should you take my meaning? I think Albert doesn't reply, but doesn't seem to disagree. <laughs> Let me go down very quickly, um, and perhaps you can follow close. I think you have an instinct for these things, Mr. Thomas. Just... You um, were on the right path when you wandered outside the hill fort and saw Agnes. Maybe this is the right call. But we, we should watch ourselves too. There is, there is something about this man. Don't go in anywhere we can't see you. Can you all make a spot hidden roll, please? Ninety-four. Eighty-eight. Oh, I got a ninety-four too, Jinx. I got a 61, okay. so we're all just rolling high. High <laughs> rollers, guys. I hate that fine, Johnny. That fine is like my <laughs> least favorite fine. Some of you will head down into all the fineness. <laughs> I, think, I, I think Albert would like to kind of find a position like overlooking as best as possible. I'm not exactly pointing my shotgun down there, but I'm trying to find somewhere if I needed to, I could shoot down there. And it's not obscured. Your your best bet is to move around the other side 
of the sunken area, which you can do. Yeah. Um, you, you could, you, you've got a good line of sight from here, but the range is quite high. Yeah, yeah. For your okay. weapon. Um, if, if Samuel is still like near before I do that, then I might say, I'm going to head over the other side, just over there for a better view, Samuel. Stay. Just be cautious. Thank you. I just, I, I just want to find out what they're what they're planning to do, and perhaps I can, perhaps I can find out some more. I will circle round. I, I don't mind. I'm assuming Willie follows me. I don't mind what the other yeah. two do. Samuel was slightly relieved that the the gun won't be right next to him. <laughs> It'll just be pointing at him from an elevated position instead. <laughs> I might stay with Edmund, I think, uh, unless Edmund wanders off somewhere as well. I'm I'm still trying to decide what to. Um, I think I'll hang back. Um, yes, I trust Mr. Thomas to uh, to have a reasonable conversation, and uh, yes, I'll be again find a, a place to look over the scene. That's. Uh, Relatively, not exactly hidden, but you know, unobtrusive, and uh, just observe. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to like stand there silhouetted against the sky with a shotgun pointing down at the surface. I don't, I don't think I'm quite at that point yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to make it look like I'm obvious or anything. Before we switch to to Samuel as well, what what is going on down there from up here? What what can we see them doing? Does anything look particularly strange, or is it just perceived normal? Circus? Setting up a circus. Um, they're beginning to, you see them sort of heaving to hoist up the the big top mm. um, and sort of setting out of side stalls and stuff like side show things. Um, so, yeah, nothing that looks, I don't know whether Albert would have seen a circus be set up before, but none of it looks weird in terms of <laughs> the actions that are taking place. Okay. Uh, what was Eliza doing? Sorry, Inga, staying with Edmund. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're just kind of hanging out on this side of the the raised area as Albert heads around the other side. Okay. Um, Samuel is dropping down. Uh, so you pass the hill fort on your right, um, and you head towards the area that is being set up as a circus. Um, you, As you approach, you hear the... But at a level that is too low to be people playing it. Okay. Is there a clear direction that I can hear this from, or is it just kind of... It's coming from towards the circus. Okay. And can I see anybody at this point? Uh, yeah, there's a few people um, setting things up. Um, you spot uh, somebody stood juggling, um, obviously practicing their act. Um, a, a couple of people in uh, sort of leotards on a low... A low high rope, mm -hmm. um, uh, practicing for the evening, presumably. Um, and uh, you spot a couple of bears in a cage as well, um, sleeping. Uh, okay. So yeah, there's there's quite a lot of activity around you. And is there a kind of like a a, a tent or anything that looks like? it's kind of a landmark in the camp as in, you know, where if I'm looking for the, you know, the leader, a direction that I might head in. You would imagine that maybe as sort of the, the big tops being hoisted, he may be somewhere around there overseeing potentially. Okay. So before heading in that general direction, I'll, I'll approach the nearest person that I can who looks, who's kind of reasonable-ish to interrupt, whether that might be the, the juggler or if one of the gymnasts is sort of standing waiting for their go, I'll sort yep. of approach them. 
yeah, probably the the gymnast who's sort of spotting the other one. There's not that much you need to spot two foot off the floor, but um, okay. yes. So yeah, Samuel will approach. And say, good afternoon. It's quite the show you're preparing for. Uh, well, yes, we hope so. Have you come far today? Oh, we we travel all around the country, sir. Ah, so you must do this quite regularly. Yes, yes, most nights. Um, obviously, uh, we're in the run-up to Christmas now, so um, a lot of people are looking for some family entertainment for the evening. And the village must be very excited. How do you normally bring them here and take them back? Uh, who, sorry, sir? Um, if you're setting up here, and I guess you need visitors uh, from the village. Oh, they'll just walk up, so it's it's not too far. I see. Have you been here before? Uh, no, sir, not here. No. We often play uh, sort of larger um, towns and and cities, sir. So it's a bit of a bit of a strange one. But I believe that the the boss knows the landowner, so um, that's why we've ended up here. I see. Well, I look forward to the show. Uh, speaking of the boss, have you seen him around? Um, I'd imagine that he's uh, probably checking on the progress of the, the big top. I see. Well, best of luck with your, with your practice, and I hope you draw the crowds. Thank you very much, sir. Will I be seeing you there this evening? Absolutely. So... Uh, his turn up on the thing. Okay, so Samuel will head towards, yeah, head in the direction that he gestured. Yeah. And keep his eye out for the, the room master. Okay. Um, are you sort of circling around the flat, the currently relatively flattened big top, keeping an eye out for him? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll do one lap around, keeping an eye out for him initially. Okay. As you get around the far side of it, so the side that's nearest where Albert will be, basically, um, you about 20 yards in front of you, spot a hare. It just, it's like in the middle of everything going up. Yeah, just looking at you. And I think a sanity roll please. That seems very fair. <laughs> okay. Oh, poor Samuel. That is a, uh, a fail. Okay. Uh, one sanity loss. Okay. Um, and then you hear a heave and uh, the sound of the, the big top being hoisted. Uh does that get your attention away from the hair? So I think Samuel will start and then very quickly look at where the the uh, the noise came from, and then as quickly as he can, sort of revert back to where to the hair. Okay. As you quickly turn and look at the uh, the big top, um, you spot the ringmaster who looks as if he's walking out of the recently created doorway of the big top. Uh, and then as you turn back, the hair is nowhere to be seen. So Samuel is just definitely pretty shaken at this point. Um, he's going to look up in the direction of where he believes the rest of the group are overlooking. Um, I guess he can't see them very well. Albert um, will have made his way around now to that side and Edmund and Eliza are at the other side. You'd probably struggle to see Edmund and Eliza. Um, if Albert is anywhere near one of the lamps, I would say that you would be able to make him out. Uh, it's I, just, think, yeah. I think Albert wanted to kind of remain visible from make sure Samuel, he could see Samuel, but also probably that Samuel could see him. So yeah, I think he's maybe leaning on the lamp then. So I think Samuel, he knows that they wouldn't have seen it, but it's just a comfort thing. He's just, he's just looking around to check that they're around yeah. before he continues. Um, okay, so yeah, 
urgent urgent items at hand. So Samuel will will head over to the the ringmaster, albeit pretty shaken at this point. Could, could I? I mean, I couldn't see the hair, but could I, from my distance, perceive Samuel's shocked face looking up at me? <laughs> Do you think? Oh, that, yeah, that'd and be unreasonable. You pr you probably caught him sort of stopping. Because he was just wandering, keeping an eye out, and he'll have just stopped, basically. Yeah. So you probably got that. And then the sound of the big top going up. Samuel looking round and back. You'll have seen the ringmaster, potentially, if you were looking. Mm -hmm. um, sort of come out of the newly created doorway of the big top. Um, as if, like, some kind of magic trick. Uh with a flourish as he came out. Mm -hmm. um, and as, yes, you'll, you'll have spotted Samuel then look up at you as, after that as well. I think as Samuel's <laughs> probably freeze and double take and everything as well, I'll probably uh, turn to Willie and be like, something's wrong. Well, everything's wrong, but... Yes. I guess we wait. Um, Albert hears the sound... If Albert's looking straight down, he hears the sound of a shell being pushed into the <laughs> shotgun. It's comforting. So I think I think Sammy when he looks up will will kind of Yeah, not not make any kind of gesture or anything, but will kind of as if to say, I know you're here and if the, if I need you, I will do something, but I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Albert recognizes that and just kind of puts puts a hand like that, just just a willy. And doesn't say anything else. Okay, so so Samuel will um, will approach the ringmaster. I'm guessing he's pretty conspicuous as the sort of non circusy guy walking around. So I presume that I'll, he's hoping to get his attention just by kind of being present and, and see how he reacts. Yeah, he um, he basically as as the big top comes up and he walks out of it, he's only sort of fifteen steps away from you. Um, so he spots you pretty much instantly. Mr. Thomas. Um, hello. I, I didn't, I didn't realize we were, we were acquainted. We're not, sir, but I hope to be by the time the evening is through. Have you come to revel in the festivities? <laughs> yes. Samuel's pretty taken aback by this. Um, that, that was... That was impressive. Um, ha has Sir John told you about about us at some stage? Um, I guess, although you, you've not met before. Um, well, very impressive. Thank you, sir. Before I was the ringmaster, I used to be the fortune teller, so I've picked up a few tricks along the way. Very good. Um, any anyway, uh, what, what should I call you? That's an interesting question. I suppose while we're in the grounds, the ringmaster is the correct form of address. Oh, as you like. Um, yeah, well, I'm here to say uh, I'm sorry about before. Um, the situation was, was quite tense here before you oh, arrived. You, you did nothing to upset me, Mr. Thomas? Well, um, I, I, I was hoping that we could um, we could draw a line under this to an extent, and and maybe we could even even join the festivities later, as and when. Yes, but... of course. I am very hopeful that uh, Sir John and all of his guests will be in attendance this evening. I'm just uh, I guess, I guess the the group is interested in um, you know what we what we should expect, and and do you usually play play venues like this? Oh, we, uh, we play all over the country. Um, I believe I may have overheard you talking to one of my gymnasts, who I, I think told you the same. Um, this is a potentially a smaller uh, venue than we might usually choose, but um, yes, Sir John and I have some mutual acquaintances who, uh, well... I believe that he'll be along this evening, and uh, he seemed to think that it may be a, a good time. We were around these, this neck of the woods anyway. I see. Um, 
Well, we've also been invited here, and um, and we have some stake in in events over the next day or two. Um, I wondered if 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 your mutual acquaintance had they told you any more about um, why why you've been asked here at this time? It does feel like a strange coincidence. No, as I say, it was. Uh... I believe there is some kind of announcement of a breakthrough of some kind, something far beyond my understanding, I'm sure. And uh, since we were here anyway, he seemed to think that it would be a good time for us to all meet up and why not make some money in the process? And do you expect good takings? Well, I, I, I hope that you're not from a, a, a village of this type, Mr. Thomas, but I can't imagine that they have much in the way of entertainment around here. I'm sure we'll do all right. Very good. Um, I I hope this isn't too much to ask, but how did you do that? I've I've spoken to my fair share of uh, I've spoken to my fair share of people who who could claim to make insights as you did, but I I swear you've no there's no reason you would know my name. Well, I'm sure all will become clear, Mr. Thomas. And he turns around and walks away towards the big top. Okay. Samuel at this point is going to make another lap, um, see if he can see anybody that looks senior or, you know, relatively senior, who he might also be able to speak to. Um. Uh, so everybody that is around looks to be either basically employed for sort of manual labor or is a performer of some kind, whether that be a skill or a bodily deformity of some of some description or, you know. And is the music still playing at this point? Um, you think you can pick it out from time to time when the noise level drops around you. It's not okay. always audible. It's not at that sort of ear splitting level that it was earlier by any means. And you're unsure whether it's the surroundings and the strange day that's making you hear it or whether it really is still there at a low level. So is there, is there like a direction that Simon might think it's coming from that he, he would investigate or is it just kind of low level ambient background noise and it's yeah, you feel like he's wasting his time? If you, if you had to pick a direction, you would probably say the big top. Okay. You feel like it's sort of if you're walking around it like clockwise, you feel like you're hearing it in your right ear more than your left ear, no matter which direction you're in. Okay. And is there a, is there an entrance or exit to the big top that he could go through? Yeah. Yeah, you well, the they're sort of dropped down um okay. sort of canvas covers of the doors. So, yeah, I reckon I reckon Samuel is kind of feeling like he doesn't want to come back completely empty-handed. Um so he's going to take a take a peek into the big top, see what he can see. Okay. Um <clears throat> so the seating is being set up in here, sort of circular rows of chairs around the outside. Uh, so there's a few people doing that. Um, the ringmaster is currently nowhere to be seen. Um, there is a high rope, uh, high, tight rope walk being lifted. Um, no music player that you can see, nobody playing any instruments in here as far as you can see. Okay. Uh, so, and in fact, you can see some um, sort of military drums set to the side. Um, nobody there. They're obviously there prepared for later. Okay. So, and then if, if Samuel heads back outside, can you hear it again? Uh, well, when it's quiet in there, you can hear it to some degree. Okay. Although, it, although it seems to be all around in here rather than from okay, one direction. 
so I think I think at this at this point Samuel is is going to um, head outside head outside of the big top and sort of look towards the group and make a kind of as subtle a gesture as he can, sort of pointing away, as if to say, "Let's meet somewhere else." But I'm heading back. Albert sighs with relief to Willie when he sees you come back out the big top. <laughs> um, I guess this is probably everyone, not just me as well. While we, while kind of Sam has been wandering around, I guess we were all keeping quite a close eye on what was going on. Was there anything strange to see at all? Other than obviously we couldn't see inside the, the big top. No. Okay. Although, um, for your reference won't mean anything to you at the moment uh, as characters, but the you didn't see the ringmaster leave the big top after he went in. Okay. I will wait until Samuel has either reached me or reached the hill somewhere where we kind of got up to where he was heading to before I turn away. Cool. So, uh, shall we? Shall we wait and see if Mr. Thomas comes back past our way, or? Well, yeah. I guess we'll be heading vaguely in our direction, Johnny. Uh, I I presume he would be. That's the the most mm -hmm. obvious way for him to go up. Uh, and if Albert anyway, and yeah. Willie are heading back round as well, I would presume that they would. Yeah, I think we'd arrive there. a moment later if we waited for you to kind of safely get back up. But yeah, we'll be there in like a minute or two as well. Okay. Uh, when he gets back, then well, what what happened? What did he say? Um, so it's kind of a bit shook. I spoke to I spoke to one of the performers, and they said it was it was a bit unusual to be in a venue like this, which I don't think is any surprise to any of us. Um, when I did speak to the ringmaster, he knew my name. He, he actually addressed me by by my name before I'd even said anything. I can the only explanation I can think of is that the the mutual acquaintance must know who is here um, in some detail. Why that would be, I have no idea. Um, but it. Yeah, the, the ringmaster made it quite clear that the reason he is here and the circus is here is not principally about money. In fact, they don't even anticipate making very much money being here. Um, yeah, it, it sounds like the whoever it is who's pressuring Sir John at this point is um, encouraged them to be here and, and wants everybody in the same place. And I can only assume knows who we are, or certainly knows who I am, presumably who you, you are as well. Um, yeah, that's that's all I can make from him. And he seems he seems quite the showman. Um, mm. He's very, very keen to keep that that's that sense going. Um, what yeah. what did you see? I saw something starting. Johnny, can I can I make just on the ringmaster bit? Yeah, you can make like a like it's almost like from memory, like kind of psychology kind of check on because for the ringmaster before, like did he seem uh, when we saw him outside the house? Like, did he seem like he was um, sort of there at someone else's command, a bit begrudgingly, or did, or did he seem more like you know he wanted to be here, like you know he he was sort of calling the shots and saying no, I'm. Stand, you know, standing the ground, like did it, it didn't seem like he was following orders, but obviously with what Samuel's just said, it certainly didn't seem like he was there begrudgingly. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got kind of a um, almost a feeling of power from him at mm. the time, um, which okay. doesn't really ring true to the way that Samuel is describing his interaction with him yeah um but yeah okay mr yeah, thomas I'll ask, I'll ask matthew about the uh the shock you had then cool. sorry samuel <laughs> i 
Yeah, I, I did. I saw, I saw, you know what I, I'm sure you know what I saw. I mean, I imagine there were many shocking things down there. Anything to do with the circus? The A, A hair. Um, and the same one, and then it was gone. I do we know it's the same one? Surely. Yeah, I, at this point, did it just stare? Nothing uh -huh. else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, and then I I saw the ringmaster briefly um, shouting commands and kind of took my attention off it, and, and then the hair was gone. It was right in the middle of the camp, and. It seemed completely unperturbed by everything that was going on. Never been concerned. Willie, have you seen a hair like that? Standing straight, staring ahead, not reacting to anything we do? Um, no, sir. I mean, that doesn't sound like a hair to me. That's what I said first time, but now I've seen it too. Many strange things, as I said. Either way, I think whatever's going on here is is designed to to put pressure on Sir John for some reason. Do any of you know why Sir John invited you? No idea. Just just the reason given in the letter that there was some sort of discovery or announcement to be made. And what he said that, that evening when we, uh, gosh, it was, only, was that only last evening, last mm. night, um, about uh, bringing together scientists and journalists and it seems like there was some sort of purpose to each of us being here. Of course there was, why else would we be invited? But other than that, I, I have no other connections to the man. I don't know anything about his work or his history. I, it, it doesn't seem to relate to any of the work that I've done over the last few years. I, I haven't a clue. And I'll look around to uh, Albert and Samuel as well. Same for you? He said he'd read some of my work, but I failed to see how it relates to anything that we're encountering here. I do, I do worry that um, he was not the source of the uh, the gas list. I wonder now, uh, Mr. Thomas, that uh, since you're known to this uh, this ringmaster, whether this whole thing has been orchestrated by uh, by this George Smith, and that uh, perhaps Mr. Smith has been in control of uh, the invitations. That would certainly explain but um, how do we of... each other? Why would he have chosen us? None of us knew I don't know. at this point barely at all. I don't know. It's not just Mr. Smith, of course. There's the other colleague, Mr. Ra Rowlett? Mr. Rowlett? Yes, John Rowlett. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, they're all obviously working together in some capacity. So it absolutely stands to reason that he would know, at least know of the guest list, if not, as you say, be in charge of it or you'd be responsible for it, but I, I I feel like there's something, it was Mr. Mr. Rowlett's name, who was, who, it was he who called him, who called Sir John last night to complain about the the delay or, or something, who called him away, uh, it was a phone call from Mr. Rowlett. And now we're hearing a little more about Mr. Smith, None of this brings us any closer to explaining the madness we've all witnessed, though. These are just some people who may be associated with this. What the hell do they have to do with this? I... Of course, whoever it is that Sir John's been speaking to, mm. whenever he disappears and reappears. We've been having otherworldly experiences here. Nothing could explain this according to how we understand the world as we know now. We all know this. Come on. There will be an explanation. There will be. We just need to uncover it. I just, I just worry that Sir John is not in control of whatever is going on here. There's hardly any doubt about that. Wow. Yes. If I hadn't thought so before, this circus business, certainly. What? <laughs> Would any of you be interested in a proposition from any of these people that we've encountered after this? I can't imagine so. Not a proposition, but I'd certainly be interested in an explanation. <laughs> I don't doubt we all would be, but mm -hmm. proposition? No. He did say it was an opportunity, didn't he? 
something we would want me, to miss out on. Something tells me he had no intention of anything going like this anyway. The man clearly had no clue what the seriousness of all was going to occur. I feel like we've got mixed up in something that he's made an awful mess of now. I wonder what would have happened if he hadn't been so delayed that first that, that evening. I guess would this all have been done with by now? If he was um, remotely motivated in, to tell us about this opportunity, he'd have done it by this point. I don't think he can. He seems to need to wait for his colleagues. Either that, or this is some bizarre trap to keep us all here, just feeding us intrigue. I, that doesn't make any sense, though. Hmm. None of it makes sense. When, when, when Eliza said trap, I just, like, look at Willie. <laughs> <laughs> kind of feeling bad. <laughs> Actually, that probably reminds me. Can we? Yes. Um, yes, you're quite get, right. Can we get it? Agnes out of here? Go get the carriage. I think that's the priority now. Um, um, yes, I, sir. Of I, I don't know what else you could say, but if any of the other staff want to leave, it's probably a good idea they do. Um, of course. Take the carriage and take anyone who wants to down to the village. Mm -hmm. Careful with the man. He was quite fragile. Yes. Yeah. Very good, sir. Uh, I'll be here waiting for you. What are we doing this evening do we think we'll even have a choice in the matter or are we going to the circus tonight <laughs> it wasn't clear if they were setting up for tonight but i presume so otherwise i guess they would be waiting for the morning by the time that you sort of left that area it looked almost good to go i I don't think Albert wanted to, if we were trying to walk away, I don't think Albert actually wanted to walk to leave it out of sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as a, a note, if we were walking back to the house or something. Albert's intention is to stay keeping an eye on the circus. Very slow walk, vaguely in the direction of the house, but not yeah. really intentionally, purposefully going back. Yeah. I, I, su I suppose if we've kind of crested and we're kind of moving out of the circus, I think Albert will say, as you presumably will, he's gone at this point, Albert will say, I think I'll stay here and keep an eye on them. Can we see the fort from here as well? Yes. Yeah. I might sort of glance in that direction. I have my, my gaze linger there. And, just... and this is still curious too. Don't suppose anything will change. You could go have a quick look. I'm just wondering whether, whether we ought to. Let's go on. Let's. I'll start heading towards the fort. I hope this is okay, but I would like to gather my things. Perhaps I will meet you shortly. Albert is intending to remain right here and keep watching the circus. Then I guess I should uh, accompany Miss Smith. And if you're. Uh... Thank God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think if, if Samuel was intending to go get his things, I think I would say to Mr. Carter, please accompany Mr. Smith. <laughs> okay. Perhaps, uh, perhaps I might take that pistol after all. Yeah, I'll hand you the pistol. But also ask for the knife pack. Sure. <laughs> uh, Matt, can you make me a spot hidden roll on your way back to the house, please? Okay, that is a pass just... Okay. Um, <clears throat> just off to the side of the steps through the main door into the castle, what looks like may have maybe fallen out of somebody's pocket, um, you see what appears to be a looking glass. Okay. Um... Uh, not a looking glass, sorry, um, like a magnifying glass. Kind of. Oh, magnifying glass. Okay. So uh, it's quite ornately engraved around the edges. Okay, definitely having a look at that engraving. Is it is it like close enough that I might have fallen out a window, or is it just kind of laid out? Um, it could have fallen out of a window, although you would have expected it to become damaged in that kind of a fall. Okay. Um, it doesn't look particularly damaged. So um, yeah, Samuel will pick it up, kind of have a bit of a look. Or maybe establish that seems unlikely that it's come from anywhere and yeah take a closer look and take a look at the engraving did you see the 
wall painting in the hill fort? Um, yes. Although I didn't, I didn't make the connection that there was anything wrong with it, but I did see it. Uh, it's that, and I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> um, so, uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, put them in the chat and John can put them up on screen for us to discuss or answer, whichever is relevant. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed that. Uh, promo rundown. Links are below the video to uh, Twitch slash YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Discord. Come join our Discord. It's free and you can talk to us about stuff. Or if you want behind the scenes information and ahead of time information, then you can go on the Patreon and sign up to the cheapest one and then you'll get that <laughs> on the Discord. Um, and uh, you can also, um, if you uh, pay a larger amount a month, you can have Matt, who runs the other two main games on the channel, run a game for you and your friends once a month. That's really exciting. Um, that sounded sarcastic. It wasn't. It's just my voice. I get in loads of trouble for this. It's just my voice. I'm sorry, everybody. It really is exciting. It's my voice. So sorry. So, <laughs> um, and uh, so Monday nights, A Call of Cthulhu. Tuesday nights at the moment, A Blades in the Dark. Uh, this week is the third episode, I think. Um, Wednesday nights at the moment, A Coriolis and this week's is the second episode uh, every other Sunday on the Free League Twitch um, Matt runs a Simba Room uh, game called Fetters of Stone uh, this Sunday is an on week uh, and uh, every first Saturday of the month we run a different one shot with uh, different systems, players and GMs the July one it's me running uh, Honey Heist which is nothing like Call of Cthulhu and is all about uh, basically Ocean's Eleven, but bears. Um, and uh, Inga is taking part in that. So um, you'll get two of your familiar faces on there. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and yes. John. Oh, and John. Yes, Stream Manager John is also playing. John was actually the first person to jump in when he found out <laughs> that there was a D8 table to roll on for hats for your bear. Um, <laughs> the D8 is, I think, you roll twice, so you get yes, two hats. Yes, you get two hats. Yeah. Yeah, if you roll an 8, you roll twice more and then get it. So if you roll an 8 again... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Potentially infinite hats. It's amazing. Mm. Johnny, I'd just like to point out you're a maniac. What was this <laughs> session? Um, You're a complete maniac. The sped up <laughs> descent into madness. That was what this session was. Uh, you know, sometimes, this doesn't happen very often because I love dice and all the mechanics, but sometimes I hate dice. And today, when I tried to shoot that horse, I hated the dice. I really wanted to lie about that result. Like, really that poor wanted. horse, says John. I really <laughs> wanted to see how that turned out. Because I was not quite crazy enough yet to try and shoot someone. And he's also come down from the crazy now, so he isn't going to go shooting anymore. But that Good. moment, there was just a perfect... On crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just have, and I really wanted to see how that would have played out. Oh, oh man, yeah, I'd have loved to see what happened there. Oh, that would have been no one else so really been phased about him like, shooting in general, which is mad anyway. Yeah. But... I had a really good chance of making that shot. I'm, like a, I'm a really good shot, and then I had to go roll 80-something. <laughs> I just looked at it. I shoot the horse. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I wish I'd use luck now as well, thinking back on it, but it moved forward too quick. Oh, yeah. yeah. I should have thought about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Edmund and Samuel really not at all perturbed at Albert wandering around with a loaded shotgun, presumably smelling of whiskey. Given the circumstances, is that the, <laughs> that's not the greatest of their worries, I'm pretty sure. I think most of the time that we've known each other for this, like, less than 24 hours, Albert's had a shotgun and smelled of whiskey. whiskey and been wielding a shotgun. So, standard fare by this point, it's right? just Albert. Oh, that's just Albert. Don't worry about him. <laughs> to be fair, that's actually not particularly untrue. If he's out and about, that's fairly common. Yeah. He's just got a much wilder look in his eyes. Oh, poor Willie. Every time I think of it, <laughs> it just upsets me that the leverage they have over the circus is enough that, like, if they get shot at, they just carry on as if nothing happened. Yeah, it's like, what? <laughs> uh, 
you'll hear the music forever now. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the next one, which is the, just the best comment I've seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you see a shot off on a new cycle. <laughs> that just did me. <laughs> Again, all of your comments when we were doing the Darkwood arc, I kept saying that Steve should be running the game because they were so much more messed up than anything that I come up with. <laughs> I can only do it if I'm typing there. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Steve to run a text-based adventure for us all. Um, I think, I think is that it for... Yeah, cool. Thanks, John. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, and come back next week for um, Fingask hyphen A Night at the Circus. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm excited to see what happens. <laughs> so I don't know if I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Uh, very exciting thing happened. Thanks, John, for the reminder. Um <laughs> Matt and Inga know each other in real life sometimes and uh, visited um, the actual Fingas Castle uh, at the weekend. There it is. Um, <laughs> it can, looks uh, less terrifying yeah. in the sun, but I think it's just having us on. Yeah. Where, where's the circus? Set to get out of shot. <laughs> they're, they're all packed in that car in the background. Oh, God. All yeah, the clouds are in there. <laughs> Yeah, it was just such a spoiler. We turned up, we were like, circus, this is really weird. You mentioned circuses this evening. I was like, makes sense. Um, Got it. Yeah. And there's a dead lion on the floor. What's the chance? <laughs> <laughs> I should say, it was, it, it was were... a really great call for a location because actually when we pottering around it, even though it was glorious sunshine, it still had, it, it was still kind of sinister, like a little bit surreal. Like it's it's kind of unkempt and a little bit wild and... And yeah, like all around and statues and things like through the trees and stuff. You're like, oh, what's that? And then there's like this weird, like mirrored sculpture thing, and <laughs> uh, and you're like, that seems oddly out of place here. <laughs> and yeah, like a well a with a do not end sign. Yeah, it's really cool though. It was really nice. Um, but yeah, we were obsessively looking for hairs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see any, so we must be sane in real life, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, I recommend it for a road trip though for sure. Mm-hmm. I want to go now. Um cool, that's everything. So catch you all next week. Uh thanks for tuning in and um try not to think about uh circuses in your dreams tonight. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.